Now that we've created and we've gotten our tasks from the database, it's time for us to turn our eyes to updating our items in the database. Uh, and there's two different types of updates. If you're familiar with REST databases, uh, you might know about put and patch. And this, uh, in this lesson, we're gonna be going over um, put, which is uh, what we might call a item potent or an atomic update. Uh, if we go and take a look at the MDN page for put itself, um, a put basically uh, is a complete and total change of the of the you know the thing in the database. Now this doesn't really explain very well exactly what this is. Uh, it basically just says, hey, it's item potent. Now if we go to our HP request methods and we go to the other one, which is a patch. Um, it does show that the difference between these is a put is a complete representation of the resource. Now, what that really means is that if you do a put and you forget to pass certain things into the back end, it's going to change them all. Let's, uh, let's implement this and we'll, we'll show you what we mean. All right. So we want to create a, a new update methods. So in data, I'm going to actually create a new route for this. Uh, so we have our get task. We're going to have an update task as well. So update task RS uh, in mod, we're going to mod that. And we're going to create a basic uh, sort of uh, 200 response. So pub async function. Um, now in this case, what are we looking for? We're looking for an atomic update or a put update. I, I personally like the words like atomic update because to me that, that, makes, that makes sense. We're updating the entire thing. So I'm going to call it that. Atomic update. And let's come back to here and add that in. So we're going to use you update task atomic update and add this into our route. All right, just like the other ones, we're going to start with just tasks. Uh, we do need to know which task we're updating. So we need the task ID and then it's going to be a put uh, to the route handler. Uh, this is fine to leave right here. Okay, now that we've created the route to this, uh, let's figure out what do we need in here? Well, we need the task ID. So that's gonna be a path. So task ID, it's gonna be a path. Uh, and these are gonna be I32s. Uh, we need that database connection. So that's gonna be extension of a Base extension database connection. Uh, and finally, we're gonna need what well, we actually just need the full the full object that we're coming in. And this does need to be the full object. Now I am going to uh, remove the ID from this because I don't necessarily want anybody to replace the ID. So uh, some like purists with REST might might object to this is like, well, you're, you know, you should allow someone to like update the ID. And this one, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like change a little bit and just say like, yeah, it's an atomic update except for the ID. That stays exactly the same. So we're gonna have a pub struct. Uh, this is gonna be a request task. Now, to go find everything that I need to update, I'm actually gonna head into our database tasks and we're going to copy all of this. So the contents of the model. So if we head back into here, I'm gonna paste this in. Well, there's a couple things we need to do to sort of clean this up. First of all, we don't need any of these uh, CRM sort of mentions. And if I hit save, it's actually going to say, hey, we don't have this date time, date time with time zone. I'm just going to import that from CRM and then it should be fine. I also need to derive uh, 
uh, derive deserialize for this. So that way, um, uh, let's see, Surday can properly put this into an object for us. And now we can take this in as JSON. So JSON, this is going to be the request task, and your type is JSON request task. Okay, great. Now, when we're going to do an update, especially because this is just an atomic update here, I want to create a full new version. So we're going to, uh, uh, let's see, I need an active model. So that new, um, this is like, we'll call this the update task. But essentially, it kind of is like a new, a new task, except it's replacing the one we already have by the ID. All right, so this is going to be, we want tasks. Uh, we want an active model. And let's fill those struct fields. All right, so uh, the ID. I am going to set this. I'm just not going to set this to be anything that comes in from the request task here. Uh, and I'm actually going to set this as an option, I32. So you can send it in. I just don't really care about that. Uh, I'm also going to send in an option for this title. Actually, you're a string. There we go with that. OK. Uh, and actually, do I really want to do that? No, actually, I don't think I want to option the title. You're required because it's required in the database. It's required in here because everything's absolutely going to be replaced. OK, so for this ID, I want to replace this with the task ID. So we're going to set this to be task ID one, which is passed in in the, uh, the path params. For the priority and for pretty much everything else, uh, that's going to be coming from up here. So uh, we're going to do. I'm going to do a little bit of a uh, a VS Code trick. So if you are using VS Code or any other editor that has uh, multi uh, multiple line commands, this is always a little bit fun to do, because I copied this directly from the uh, CRM model. Uh, the order of these are exactly the same, which is which is really nice. So on top of that, the names are exactly the same. So going to um, control or command D until I highlight all the to do's. Uh, we're going to remove this. This is going to be a set. Uh, we want this to be the request task dot. And then I'm going to go to the beginning of this line. And just um, let's see, this was on a Mac, it's option and it's alt on a alt shift right arrow on a um, Windows or Linux. Going to copy, come back to here and paste that in. And uh, VS Code actually sort of is intelligent about the, uh, the copy paste. So now I'm setting properly, okay, priority is set to this, title is set to that, everything is good and happy. We have this update task. OK, great. Now I want to take, um, I want to now do the actual update itself. I have to pull in the entity for tasks, which is, let's see, it uh, does it have it here? It kind of has, nah, it doesn't really have the entity. Uh, it belongs, OK, belongs to this entity. So. So they've created it behind the scenes for us. Uh, let's go ahead and pull that in. So we're going to do use create database task entity, but I do want to rename that as tasks. Uh, okay, so below update task here, I want to do tasks update. Now it takes in the model. This is going to be the update task. Then we want to filter. 
So this is really important because we might think, well, hey, we're updating this task. It should be intelligent to know that the ID is the one that we're updating. But that's not always the case. Uh, if I don't set a filter, it's going to update all of the tasks, which is uh, generally speaking, not what you want. Uh, OK, so to update these tasks, we have to set the filter. The filter is going to be on tasks column. Uh, we want the ID have that be equal to this task ID. So again, from the URL, we want to make sure that we're, we're updating the correct one. Uh, then we're going to exec this, pass in a reference to the database. Uh, and then finally, we have to decide what to do with this. Now, if there's an error, uh, let's see, we await. Um, that's going to give us a um, a result at the end. So let's let's return a result here. In fact, we don't need to return a result. Let's just return a status code. So in here, um, I want to know. Do I want to do? I think I think I actually do want to do a result, just simply because it's going to allow me to do a question mark. Let's do a result, uh, nothing if we're successful, and I want a status code uh, if we're unsuccessful. And then nothing is going to come with a 200, which is going to be fine. Uh, OK, so we're going to do the map error trick here, where we have the error that's come in, um, I don't necessarily care what this error is. I just want to turn it into a status code uh, internal server error. And then I can question mark you and uh, semicolon. And then we're going to return OK with an empty parentheses. And that is, <laughs> that is going to set our atomic update for us. Let's uh, turn to. Uh, Thunder client. So I have some collections. Um, I just created these in between these videos in case you're seeing these, you know, suddenly now for the first time, we're going to create a new request. This is um, maybe like, let's get all tasks first. So here's everything. Let's update this one right here. So I'm actually just going to copy, copy this. Uh, I'm going to do a New request. Uh, we're going to name this uh, put task to be um, put task or atomic update. Um, I think like maybe atomic update. This is going to be a put to HTTP localhost port 3000 slash. That was uh, task ID number seven. Oh, sorry, task ID number seven in the body. I'm gonna paste this ID here. So it doesn't matter if I change this to like eight. It's not gonna change that task. It's still gonna be number seven. Uh, title. So I am an updated updated task. Uh, priority we can set you to B. And if I leave the description out completely, that should set it to null. So let's go ahead and send you. We got a 200 OK. If we go back to get all tasks, we'll notice that in 7, I am an updated task. Priority is now B, and description is now null, but the ID is still 7. So as a review, uh, we are taking in our, our task. We've made everything match exactly what we need from the uh, from the server. Uh, sorry, from the database, uh, we're taking that in because this is the server. And uh, we're creating a new active model as if we're creating a new task. Uh, we're just setting the ID to be exactly the same ID that we're updating. And then we are, uh, well, doing that update. And then uh, we just return a 200 OK if we're good or a 500 uh, error if we fail for some reason. And that's it.
Uh, that is an atomic update for uh, for a task. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully this was helpful, and see you in the next video. Bye!